Mom fainted while giving birth to twins, and when she woke up under the sun, she realized she was paralyzed. If you don't believe in miracles, this story is for you, although very few people would believe that this story took place. This story happened in a remote forest in Canada, and even the most experienced experts couldn't explain it. If it hadn't been for the witnesses who found our main character and saw with their own eyes what was happening, this story might have been lost. Today, I'll tell you a story about a pack of wolves that rescued a pregnant woman with twins in a forest during a cold winter. That winter was extremely cold, covering the ground and nearby trees with snow. Nearby, there was a young woman living in a village, a woman named Sophia, who was happily pregnant. Unfortunately, the father of the children wasn't with her at this time because as a member of the country's navy, he often had to leave the village on duty. While the man was away, this young woman had to take care of the household, which wasn't difficult for her as she lived in a small, humble, yet happy home. And this happiness would only grow stronger when the two little ones inside her finally arrived. Sophia was very excited about this, eagerly awaiting the imminent arrival of the twins. Sophia would caress her belly while dreaming of her husband's return from duty to be with her and the twins. Today, the woman received news from her husband notifying her that he would return in the evening. Sophia wanted to greet her husband with a delicious hot stew, so they could endure the cold night together with a hearty meal. Especially because she had heard from villagers that the winds had picked up during the night, possibly signaling an approaching snowstorm. So, she hoped her husband could return before that. Soon, the woman prepared to go to the market to buy the ingredients for the stew. While she was preparing, she felt a sharp pain in her belly. Not yet, it's not time, whispered the woman to her twins, hoping her husband would return in time. Sophia knew the moment was nearing. But she wanted her husband there to witness it all. She quickly regained composure, paid for the groceries, thanked the shopkeeper, and then went home to put away the food. However, there was still one ingredient missing, water. Sophia was a very strong, independent woman. She often walked alone for several kilometers through the forest to fetch some fresh water to help her with household chores and even to drink directly from there. So, as usual, she set out to find water before the sunset because she knew the forest became more dangerous at night. However, this day she set out later than usual, but she was confident in herself, knowing that if she hurried, she could reach the riverbank before sunset. Thus, with one hand carrying a bucket and the other lightly resting on her belly, the woman embarked on the forest path. Quickly, she reached the riverbank with enough time to return home. But at that moment, her belly started to ache. The woman sat in the shadow of a tree by the river and whispered softly to the waterside, just a little longer, just a little longer. Sophia tried hard to compose herself, scooped water with the bucket, and began to hurry back home. But something worried her, she took time to recover, realizing the sun was starting to set, and the pain persisted, growing more intense and unbearable. Sophia twisted her ankle, the pain furrowing her brow, and she let out a pain scream. The agony caused her to slip onto a rock, twisting her ankle. Despite the excruciating pain, the woman made an effort to protect her belly and eventually landed on her side, spilling all the water from the bucket. She attempted to stand up, but not only did her belly hurt, but her ankle did too. Tears streamed down her face as she lay on the ground, watching the sun about to dip below the horizon. She knew she was in a very dangerous situation, and if she didn't leave soon, both her and her children's lives would be in danger. Sophia didn't want to give up easily and crawled through the forest with all her might, calling for help from anyone who could hear her voice. But she was still too far from the village, and nobody could hear her. Then, the woman heard something chilling, the howls of a wolf pack echoed through the forest. Worse yet, they were getting closer to her. The only thing the woman could think to do was to stop moving and pretend to be dead. She curled into a ball, but deep down, she knew this method wouldn't be very effective. 
However, she could only wait and pray, perhaps hoping the wolves would ignore her. Sophia didn't know how wrong she was. Suddenly, she felt a warmth behind her, the wolves had found her. The woman quickly prayed for herself and her children, preparing for the worst. In fear and pain, the woman couldn't endure any more and fainted. When Sophia woke up, she had no idea how long she had been unconscious. But at least, she didn't feel as much pain anymore. However, something immediately petrified her, a huge gray wolf was curled beneath her, and nine other wolves surrounded her, seeming to protect her from any potential danger and providing warmth. This was crucial for her as the snowstorm had begun. It was at that moment the woman began giving birth to her twins. Luckily, the babies were delivered smoothly, and a mother wolf approached them, wrapping them in her fur to shield them from the cold. Sophia was relieved to see her babies cry, indicating they were alive. She was immensely grateful to the wolves who, instead of attacking her, established a strange connection with her and her children. Soon, the pack gathered together to provide warmth for the woman and the babies. It was a scenario nobody would dare to imagine. Meanwhile, Sophia's husband had returned to the village but couldn't find his wife. The villagers told him she went to fetch water at the river but didn't return. The husband was very worried about his wife and decided to go search for her. However, the villagers could hardly stop him since it was too dangerous for him to go out at night, especially with the storm that had begun. This man had no other choice but to pray tearfully for her until the sun rose, and then set off with a group of neighbors to search for her. It didn't take long before one of the search team members spotted the lady and immediately called out to the others. Everyone was stunned by the scene before them. Sophia was flanked by two massive wolves, heading back towards the village. In Sophia's arms were two babies wrapped in a makeshift blanket made from her clothes. The woman was overjoyed to see her husband, who seemed lost in thought. The pack followed Sophia for a short distance before returning to their forest, peacefully rejoining their group without harming anyone. The husband laughed with joy upon hearing the cries of the twins. When he uncovered the blanket and saw the baby's faces, he found them completely healthy. The young couple and the villagers would never forget what happened that day. It was like a miracle, the pack of wolves helped the woman weather the storm and saved her children. Later, the woman was taken to a clinic, where they explained what had happened. Even though no one believed their story, upon examining the babies, they found them in good condition, needing only a few days in the hospital before being discharged. Sophia hoped to encounter this pack of wolves again someday and eagerly awaited the time when she could tell her children about their extraordinary birth experience. This video is incredible. Now it's your turn to answer these questions. What do you think about these wolves saving the woman and her children? Do you believe wolves are trustworthy animals? Do you believe the story told by this woman and her husband? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. Also, don't forget to like our content, so we know you enjoy these types of videos and can make more in the future. See you next time. Let's continue and enjoy the next exciting story. How did these stories develop? Sveta had to leave her home because she could no longer bear the pain of living there. Her stepfather was a drunk who always beat her for no reason. Her mother didn't care about her, only about herself and her appearance. She used her salary to buy wine for her husband and cosmetics for herself to adorn every day. Sveta couldn't understand why her mother brought a drunk man to live with her in her apartment in St. Petersburg. Although the man didn't work and didn't want to find a job, her mother didn't have the courage to leave him. She didn't even blame the alcoholic for his reckless and aggressive behavior. Before her stepfather appeared, everything was going well. Sveta had enjoyed herself with her father. Her father loves her very much, buys her presents and takes her to amusement parks. However, when she was 10 years old, her father became seriously ill and passed away. After that, she lived with her mother. 
At first their life was good. Everything changed after her mother married that man. Since the man came into the house, he has given orders and tried to take control of everything. He didn't allow Sveta to play with friends. He closed her door and kept her imprisoned in the house all the time. What's more, the man punished her for the trivial reason and forbade her to buy her mother presents. Meanwhile, he ordered her to buy the best wine. Sveta found out that her stepfather was violent towards her mother. He hit her and scolded her because she didn't buy what he wanted. Her mother began to try her best to please that beast. Sveta was in pain after she realized her mother was helpless. Her mother tried to find an ideal father for her but she failed. She continued to bear the bitterness of living with this man. Sveta just wanted to escape that house and find a job in another city. When her financial conditions improve, she will come back to pick up her mother. Then Sveta tried to leave the house. She couldn't take it anymore. Sveta grew up working as a maid for her mother and stepfather. She spent most of her time washing dishes, cleaning the house and preparing food. She was deprived of her most basic rights so she became impatient and tried to get out of that house. When Sveta was 17, she sat with Tanya, her friend, one day. She told Tanya that she wanted to leave the house because it's a nightmare for her to live with her stepfather. Her stepfather became increasingly aggressive. After listening to it, Tanya suggested Sveta to go to Moscow because there are a lot of job opportunities there. Tanya assured her that it would be easy to find a decent job there, especially for Sveta, a beautiful and intelligent young woman. She thought about her friend's words all night. Early in the morning, she put some clothes and some coins that she had saved for many years in her bag, and then she left the house and went straight to the train station. She immediately bought a ticket to Moscow but her coins were not enough for her to buy that ticket. Therefore, she bought a ticket to a city about 200 kilometers from Moscow and tried to complete the rest of the journey. Sveta got on the train. She kept thinking about her mother. She left that human beast with her mother. Sveta wanted to say goodbye to her mother and hug her before leaving home, but she knew her mother would not allow her to travel. However, she decided to take this bold step to change her destiny. She saw many beautiful scenery from the train window and was amazed by the beauty of the forest being blown by the wind. This is the first time she has left her hometown alone. She has never left St. Petersburg since birth. She tried to figure out how to go to Moscow, since her ticket didn't allow her to stay on the train to Moscow. At first, Sveta was scared because it was her first time traveling alone to a big city. Over time, she gradually calmed down. She thought that she had grown up and must face difficulties bravely. When Sveta arrived at the station where she was supposed to get off, she took her bag, got off the train and walked out of the station. She wanted someone to help her get to Moscow. She was walking on a forest path when a beautiful car stopped in front of her. A handsome guy stuck his head out of the car window and asked where she was going, but Sveta was too frightened to speak. To her surprise, the young man kept following her and asked her where she was going. He told her that he was going to take her where she wanted to go. Then this naive woman said she wanted to go to Moscow and got into his car. She sat in the front seat. The young man smiled as he closed the door from the lock beside him. Two of his friends sat in the back. When three young men were laughing, Sveta realized something was wrong but she didn't speak. She realized that she had no chance of escaping because she cannot resist three young men. She hoped they weren't evil. The driver left the highway abruptly and onto an unpaved road in the woods. It's bumpy. Sveta asked him why he took that path. The young man and his friends laughed and told her that's the way to Moscow. Sveta realized that she was in trouble. Three young men would attack her. She tried to open the door and jump out of the car but the door was closed. She started calling for help but no one helped her. 
The car was parked among the trees. Three young men got out of the car and took Sveta out. They covered her mouth with a scarf, took off her coat and her skirt. All she had left was her underwear so she was shivering from the cold. They started laughing. The young woman cried and fumbled to escape. She passed out after the driver hit her on the head. His friends put her on the ground. At this moment, the man did not know what would happen to him. He was about to sexually assault Sveta when a huge bear attacked him. The bear threw him to the ground and then attacked two other young men, severely wounding them with its powerful claws. The bear continued to violently attack them until they were immobilized. It dragged the young woman away. When Sveta woke up to find herself being hugged by a bear, she screamed and tried to get up. Suddenly she heard a voice. He told her to keep calm because the bear wouldn't hurt her. He told her that the bear had saved her from three men who tried to bully her. Sveta stood up and wanted to see who was talking. She found a strong and handsome young man on horseback with a shotgun in his hand. The young man approached Sveta and asked how she was. The man drove her home on a tractor. They moved on. Sveta rode with Andrea while the bear left and disappeared into the forest. Sveta asked about the bear's story and Andrea said the bear was his friend. Their story started two years ago. That's when he found a newborn bear cub on his farm in the forest. He realized the bear had lost his mother and desperately needed care. Otherwise he would die. Andrea took him home and treated him a pet. The bear recovered and returned to the forest, but he did not forget that Andrea saved his life when he was dying. It is an amazing animal. When he noticed that these young men wanted to attack her, he decided to help Sveta. Andrea said that the bear came to the farm and asked Andrea to follow him. Andrea was taken to the place where the accident happened. There he called the police. Three young men were handcuffed. Sveta liked Andrea very much and was fascinated by the beautiful big house and beautiful farm where he lived. Therefore, she decided to stay there for a few days and then go to Moscow. During that short time, Andrea was very kind to her and took good care of her. He took her to his farm to hang out and meet his friend. The bear often visited him and got some food. In fact, Andrea was fascinated by her beauty and impressed by her intelligence. He didn't tell her that he loved her at first because he was afraid Sveta would reject him and accuse him. Then he found out that she wanted to be with him as long as possible. He told Sveta that he didn't want her to go to Moscow because he loved her and wanted to marry her as soon as possible. The young woman immediately accepted his proposal. Sveta smiled and hugged him, then told him that she fell in love with him at first sight and wanted to marry him. A year after Sveta got married, she told Andrea that she wanted to take her mother to live with them. Andrea immediately agreed. In this way, Sveta's wishes were all fulfilled. She lived with her mother and the young man. They distanced themselves completely from her abusive stepfather. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and share this video on social networks. We will reply to your comment as soon as possible. Let's move on to the next story. The bears blocked the rails seeing why people couldn't stop crying. Dan Morris dreamed of becoming a train driver since childhood and when his parents bought him Christmas gifts, they knew that the only thing that could make their boy happy was the toy railroad. The boy was born in a town in Wyoming and was used to being with nature. In summer, the boy went to the forest to pick mushrooms and berries. In winter, he went skiing or sledding. When Dan graduated from high school, his parents had no doubt that he would become a train driver and would end up working on a railway. The young man started his new profession with enthusiasm and he quickly mastered these skills. He saw each new success as his own personal victory. Studying was easy for Dan, which greatly delighted his teachers and family. It's true. 
It only happens when the person studies something that he's truly interested in. They hope it would become the work of their life. Finally Dan's most cherished dream came true. He became a train driver. There are no words that could describe how happy and excited when Dan was first stepped into the driver's cabin. Of course, Dan first had to complete a long internship under the supervision of an experienced mentor who couldn't stop marveling at his desire to learn. His love for trains is endless, even if it is a complicated job. Mom, Dad. Today I drove the train on my own for the first time. Dan said after returning home from work. His parents looked at each other. Without saying a word, they rushed to hug their beloved son. They had no doubt that Dan would achieve his goal because he had been working tirelessly for it. Over time, with his unremitting efforts, this determined young man turned into a professional in his field and the bosses always always follow his example. The other day, Dan transported valuable timber and minerals from one part of the country to the other with his partners. They admired the beauty of the places they passed on the route. By this time, the man was already married. Every time his shift ended, Dan rushed home to hug his wife. The man knew that there would always be a delicious dinner waiting for him at home prepared by his beloved wife. Day by day, nothing changed in the life. The young couple had no changes except for the glorious growing tummy. Dan went to work and it seemed to him that nothing could surprise him in the profession of the train driver. The young man couldn't have known at this time how wrong he was. One day, during a rather ordinary journey transporting a load of timber, Dan and his partner, Jimmy, witnessed a strange incident. It's happening right on the railway track. Dan, who carefully followed the driving rules, was intently watching the tracks ahead as he was driving the train. He admired the beauty of the surrounding views. In order to get a better view, the man looked through old army binoculars once in a while. He got them from his grandfather who took part in the war in Vietnam. This stretch of the way ran through a particularly picturesque area. The breathtaking landscapes delighted Dan and Jimmy. Suddenly Dan noticed something strange several hundred feet ahead of him. At first, the man thought that it was just an optical illusion. But then he realized that it actually wasn't. From a distance, the strange object resembled a log or a medium-sized boulder. When Dan looked closer, he was horrified to realize that it was a man. The driver's heart beat fast and his hand instinctively reached out for the brakes. The fact was that the man was lying on the wheels and was not moving. Dan realized that something must have happened to him. Then Jimmy screamed out in surprise and pointed towards the forest near the railway track. At least a dozen bears jumped out of there. These predators instantly surrounded the man lying on the rails. My goodness. Dan thought that they would tear him to pieces. He realized that this unfortunate man desperately needed someone to help him. To his amazement, bears surrounded the man. They raised their heads and began to howl loudly. What are they doing? Jimmy asked. However, Dan didn't answer his question since he was at a loss and had no idea how to act in a situation like this. He came across these forest predators in his life but they did not behave in such a strange way. Dan pulled on the brakes and the freight train with a load of timber began to slow down, but it continued to move for a bit. Then something happened. It surprised two drivers and made them believe in miracles. Jimmy shouted and pointed to the man who lay unconscious and showed no signs of life. That man stood up and was now kneeling down. Dan looked away from the dashboard and saw what his partner was talking about with his own eyes. At the same time, the man got up and staggered off the track. Dan thought maybe he's drunk. When the train moved a bit further, they caught up to the stranger and the bears surrounding him. Dan realized how wrong he was. The man who fell on the tracks turned out to be an elderly forester who probably got overtired from a long walk around the territory. 
He had a backpack on his back and a case with a small axe. Moreover, the man wasn't scared of the bears surrounding him. On the contrary, he stroked and petted these brown predators. Dan asked, are you all right? He anxiously leaned out of the driver's cabin. The forester smiled and nodded his head. The bears won't harm you. Jimmy asked out of curiosity. No. They will not harm me. They are not predators. They're my friends. The forester answered with a smile on his bearded face. Two drivers looked at each other and shook their heads in response. Neither of them had ever seen anything like this in their life, so they couldn't find any words to comment on what just happened. After saying goodbye to the forester, Jimmy and Dan continued on their way. They gradually accelerated the train to its regular speed. In the rest of their journey, the drivers could only think about the strange old man whom they had met on their way. Eventually, their emotions had subsided. The men completely focused on their work. About two weeks after the incident, Dan was walking around the city and accidentally met the forester who was surrounded by bears. As if those bears were his domestic dogs. Dan immediately recognized the old man and greeted him warmly. After hesitating for a second or two, Dan asked the elderly man to tell him what had happened that day on the railroad tracks. Turns out the forester's name was Jackie Simpson. He considered himself a hereditary forester because his father, grandfather and great-grandfather had all worked in forestry. Simpson's choice to become a forester didn't surprise anyone in the family. After hearing this, Dan nodded respectfully because he always highly appreciated the people who guarded the natural resources of his home. Simpson had held his position for at least 30 years. He knew the area entrusted to him like the back of his hand. The old man once came across a young female bear killed by hunters and three brown bear cubs. They're clinging to cold body. He wanted to take a detour. After realizing that the cubs would die without a mother, Simpson decided to adopt them. Thus the old man buried the female bear under an old pine tree and placed a huge boulder on her grave so that predators wouldn't tear her body to pieces. Simpson took off his jacket and put the cubs in it. He carried them home in his makeshift bag. There the old man fed them porridge and even dog biscuits which they really liked. Three cubs lived with Simpson for about six months. When they got stronger and bigger, they went to live in the forest. Nonetheless, whenever three predators came across the elderly forester, they would always recognize him and even play with him. Over time, the bears were still friendly and affectionate with the old man. That's exactly what happened that day. The forester got high blood pressure from a long journey and fainted right on the tracks. Fortunately, Simpson's friends were nearby at that time so they could save him quickly. What you just told me is incredible. Dan was very impressed by the old man's story. That's not surprising because animals will remember and repay you when they're treated well. Simpson said. He shook hands with the young driver. Dan would often recount this amazing story to his son, Roger, sitting in front of the burning fireplace on long winter nights. He thought that this story should be passed on forever and it would live forever. When the time came, Roger would tell his son about it. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.